Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I want to talk about running a microwave inside your van or camper setup. Now at first blush I know that topic doesn't sound super duper exciting because you see RVs all the time that have microwaves installed and running no problem. The thing with those are a lot of times those are larger motorhomes or RVs. They're like class A's or class C's that have giant battery banks that really have no problem running an appliance like a microwave that might draw up to a, a kilowatt. However what if you have a smaller setup like mine like a cargo van or or a class B. How small a battery bank can you get away with and have it still run a microwave? So for example in my van here I've got uh, pretty much I think probably the smallest battery bank you, you, you want to try. I've got a 1200 watt hour battery or for those of you who like to talk about amp hours that's a 100 amp hour battery and the question is is this going to be able to run a microwave or not? Can we show a proof of feasibility that this will work? So if you come over to the van you'll see that what I've got installed in the back is I have this very simple microwave. So the question today is, can we get this thing to run off a 1200 watt hour battery and other appropriate electronics such as a 2000 watt inverter? So if that sounds like fun, let's go ahead and rewind time and go back to unboxing this microwave as well as testing it indoors on a shore power outlet just so we can get an understanding of what kind of power does this microwave draw? All right, so let's go ahead and get it out of the box. So as you can see, here it is, the commercial chef. It is the uh, 0.6 cubic foot, uh, and I don't know if you can read this right here, but it says 600 watt microwave power. Now, we're gonna uh, see later that that's talking about the output power, not the input power, but um, that's uh, for a discussion for a little bit later. What else is here on the front? It's talking about how it's got rotary knobs and six power levels. I guess we're gonna see how those power levels actually uh, function. Turning to the other side of the box, I guess it's got some other kind of information, pretty much the same thing that's on the front. Again, it says 600 watts, uh, which again, like we said, is probably the output power, not the input power. The weight is a little over 21 pounds. And then right here, I don't know if you can see the dimensions here, but it's about uh, almost 18 inches by 13 and three quarters by 10 and a quarter inches. So that's about the setup. Nothing else on the box. I guess it's just got the <laughs> the specifications in, uh, I think that's French. <laughs> okay, so that's what's on the outside of the box. Why don't we go ahead and cut this guy open and see if we can get to the insides because I really want to take a look at the actual microwave and then get to testing it with a actual watt meter so we can see how many watts does this consume on the input side, not the output side. Because what I'm actually trying to do with this is to get it into a camper. Okay, so let's see. Uh, it's got some pretty decent packaging, it looks like. Let me see if I can get this first off. Okay, good bit of uh, normal styrofoam. Let's get rid of that. And then, I think we can probably just pull this sucker out. Okay. That's the microwave. What's here in the box? Nothing really. No, just some more air foam. Uh, that's a little interesting. I don't know why they put this plastic piece in here. I guess to keep the corners from getting damaged. So that's kind of nice. Uh, all right, check that. And here's the actual microwave unit. Again, it looks like it comes in this wrapped up in Plastic, kind of. <laughs> okay, I guess this plastic can just kind of come off like that. All right, no problem. It's got some blue tape on the top to keep the door shut, I believe. Let's go ahead and take the blue tape off. Um, okay, what does this say here? It says, remove protective film before use. What protective film are they talking about? Let's see, I wonder if they mean there's some protective film somewhere else. Well, let's keep looking. Oh, more blue tape here to keep the door shut. So let's get this blue tape off. Okay. And I don't know what, uh, unless, they're, oh, they're talking about right here. Okay, so there's blue, there's protective film, I think, on the front. Yeah, you can kind of see that come off. Okay. All right, so let's see what else is on here okay more blue tape on the back to keep the power cable on all right let's see here what's on the back um more information aha here's some more uh, let me see if i can zoom in we can take a gander at this a little bit closer um i don't know if that's gonna let me see if that's gonna focus 
Yes, here we go. This is a little bit better. Okay, here you can see the input power. Yes, 120 volts AC at 60 hertz. Aha, 950 watts input power. So we're going to test that with a watt meter to see what that actually is. And you can see here, output power of 650 watts. So you're actually going to need to supply um, about a thousand watts to this in order to get it to run. And again, we're going to test that out. But that's an interesting spec that uh, shows a little discrepancy in the way microwaves, I think, are advertised. They advertise by output power, not necessarily input consumption power. So here's your cable. It's not super duper long. I don't know. I would guess that's, you know, 30 inches long or something like that for the cable. But uh, pretty standard. Let's open this thing up, see if there's anything on the inside. Aha, okay. So on the inside, you've got your rotating plate, pretty standard, nicely packaged in some cardboard to keep it pristine. And then you got some more blue tape on the inside for whatever reason, I guess to keep the, ro the motor spinner thing from stopping. And then you got a instruction manual. Okay, pretty darn standard. And then for whatever reason, there's blue tape on the inside of the door here. I guess we can take this off. Not 100% certain why all this blue tape is here. There seems to be, is this holding something down or something? Uh, all right. I don't know, we'll take, we'll take a closer look at that later. Uh, no, it doesn't, I, don't, I have no idea why there's four pieces of blue tape on the inside of the door. But, okay, let's put our rotating plate in. Okay, and this is pretty much standard like every other microwave in the world. Get some of these cardboard bits out. And there you have it. That's pretty much what comes in the box. Uh, so it looks like we got some knobs on the front. That's, oh, this is interesting. Um, okay, so not to do anything right now because I think it's not plugged in, but <laughs> Look at that, it makes a ding noise. Okay, so that's the unboxing portion. Let's go plug this in and give it a try. All right, so here I've got it plugged into a kilometer. So right now you can see when the thing is off, it is pulling exactly zero watts, which is exactly what I wanted. If you remember, this unit doesn't have anything like a digital clock or anything like that. It's just super manual rotary button. So when it's not running, it's not pulling any power. This is perfect for like a camper or a battery powered setup. So let's go ahead and give this thing a try. Let's open this guy up, stick a cup of water in here, close the door and let's see. So the one thing to notice here is this power selector, it actually doesn't seem to have detente. It just is a uh, continuous turn knob. So let's keep it here on high and then let's come down here and turn the timer. I don't know, how about two minutes? That's one thing I think that's a little bit odd about this is that uh, I wish it had some finer resolution near the smaller numbers so you could quickly easily put on, you know, like 30 seconds or something like that. Um, I have no idea why you would want this to go all the way up to 30 minutes. I don't think I've ever used a microwave for 30 minutes continuous in my entire life, but um, oh well. Okay, so you can hear it on right now. There's a little bit of a buzzing noise and let's see how many watts this thing is pulling now. And aha! it looks about right. So they said it was about 950 watts and yeah, that's about 950-ish, uh, about a thousand watts that's being used right now. And the thing that I notice is that that is continuous power. So look at this, it's continually on at 950-ish, 975 watts. And I'm going to be quiet here and you can hear the microwave uh, being on right now. And what I'm going to do is let's turn this down to something like a medium low and we can see what happens. Okay, so it's on, and watch the meter. So in a second, it's going to just stop um, right there. Let's see. Did it stop? No, I'm st I still hear it. Let's give this a second. So the power setting is still at medium low. And I think what it should hopefully be doing in a second is, I've noticed this thing has basic, oh, there it goes. There it goes, okay? So the microwave is still on and you can see that the, the power consumption dropped down to like 40 watts. So the fan is still on. I don't know if you can see it inside, but it's turning. Oh, did you hear it kick back on? So it kicked back on and it's back up to a full thousand watts. So what this thing does, 
What the power selector does, I believe this is pretty much the same on all microwaves, is it doesn't continually and smoothly vary the power that's being consumed by the microwave. It's just a bang, bang, on, off, vary the duty cycle. So it's either on at 40 watts to just turn the fan and the, and the plate, or it's bang full on at 1,000 watts. Oh, and there's the ding. So long story short, uh, when I stick this into a camper or a battery power setup, you still need at least a 1,000 watt inverter. Um, it's not going to do you any good to try to set this here at medium low and use the microwave at some lower setting because all that means is it's, it's not going to be on at 1,000 watts all the time, but when it is on, it's still going to be pulling 1,000 watts. So let's open this guy up and take a look. Ooh, yeah, yep, yep, that's hot. <laughs> Good deal, so it's it's working right now. So let's go ahead and see if this will uh, work in a battery setup. All right, so to get the microwave running, the first thing we should do is we should actually turn off a bunch of the other appliances because I've only got a 2000 watt inverter in there. And as we saw, the microwave is gonna draw about a thousand watts and I really don't wanna stress the system. So for example, I've got this fridge running right now and it's on and you can see it's drawing, you know, I don't know, almost almost 80 watts. Well, I guess it's not all the fridge because I also got, I've got the TV running up here playing Big Trouble in Little China. So really we wanna turn off all of the other accessories. So I set up my system so I can turn off appliances with the flick of a switch. So let's turn off the fridge and let's turn off the front outlets, which is all of the um, entertainment center stuff. So now, okay, great. Now we're sitting here at nine watts, 10 watts, great. So that's just the inverter, the 2000 watt inverters drawing you know, a very small amount of power. So I think we're ready to give this a try. So we are running completely on battery power now off of that 1200 watt, uh, AG, uh, 1200 watt hour AGM battery. So uh, here's a cup of ice water that I've got. So let's go ahead and just double check the temperature um, of this cup. Okay, so let me see. Yep, 51 degrees, okay? And actually, I think I got it from the inside. Yeah, so there's, there's actually some ice in there. Okay, so go ahead, let's do this. Let's go ahead, and again, I apologize. This is not the best. This is one problem with having a small van. It's very difficult to find an easy way to maneuver and put anything where you actually want it. So let's go ahead and put the water in the microwave. And then what I can do is, oh, I forgot, whoops. Let's turn on the microwave outlet. I forgot to do that over here. Let's jump back over. I'll flip on the microwave outlet. So the microwave is now ready to rock. So let's go ahead and give this a try and see if we can actually get this to work. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Three minutes, there you go. Do you hear it? It's going, it's going. And now let's go ahead and check our battery monitor. Look at that. Look at that. We're pulling 100 amps. And here's your kilowatt, right? We're pulling a kilowatt. And it's working. Now, the only thing we should maybe also point out is, look at this. Instead of being a, like 12.6, 12.7 uh, volts, when we're pulling this kind of power on this small battery bank, this battery voltage drops quite low, 11.8. So one problem is that when the battery is actually not at full capacity, like if we're, if we're at 90 or 80%, this battery is probably not the best. I think I need to do a little bit of reconditioning or repairing it. But long story short is if you don't have enough capacity and you're trying to pull a, a kilowatt of power, it can actually trigger the inverter's low voltage alarm. So basically it will drop the voltage of the battery too low, you know, because this battery bank is so small. Um, when we're pulling that kind of power, the, the voltage drops too low and we have a problem, right? And everything will shut down. So, but other than that, this is working, right? We're still heating things up. Let's see if we can see if the battery, I don't know if you can see it very easily. Here's where I've got the battery snaked in here. And again, uh, I'm gonna have to try to maneuver in here. I apologize for the shaky camera work, but let's see if we can take a temperature reading, see if these battery terminals are heating up. So this is at 90, I don't know if you can see this, yeah, 93, okay? So it's not too bad. I think we're doing okay, right? So the, ter the, the, the leads are not heating up. Of course, I use thick wire. I think it was three aught wire for the battery connections. And here we go. The microwave is just still humming away, no problem. So we're gonna let it go for three minutes to heat up the water and see how that does. And um, we'll see what the battery voltage and the usage looks like. Maybe we can come back up and take one more look at it. 
yeah, look at that. See, we started at 100% of the battery, right? And now we've already used up 3% of the battery trying to warm up this cup of water. So while it's definitely feasible to run a microwave with this small battery bank, I think the takeaway is that uh, it's probably not ideal. You probably want a larger battery bank. Uh, to do this. So let's go ahead and give the microwave a little bit longer to finish and once it does we will pull out the water and see what the temperature is. All right so it just completed. I pulled the uh, cup out of the microwave. Let's take a temperature reading on that and yeehaw look at that. 150 now instead of 50 degrees so the microwave totally worked so you're able to go ahead and make a cup of tea and you can run a microwave here's your proof of feasibility of running a microwave in a small camper setup with a small battery bank again i'm only running about a 100 amp hour or 1200 watt hour battery but like we said uh, it's maybe not super advisable. For example, look at that, 95%. We used up 5% of the battery just warming up that one cup. And now you can see the voltage difference, right? So at resting voltage, we're almost at 13 volts, but when we're pulling a kilowatt of power, that voltage dropped all the way down to, uh, what was it, like 11.8 volts. So uh, it's doable, but uh, I think I would be a little more comfortable if I had a little bit bigger battery bank. All right, so there you have it, how you can run a microwave in your small camper or van setup. So just to summarize again, remember, I'm running a very small battery bank. I just have a 1200 watt hour AGM battery and that is able to run a microwave if you couple it with the right components. Namely, I've got a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter, which has plenty of overhead and ability to run a microwave, which requires a kilowatt of input power. So that's the proof of feasibility, but I think we saw that it's actually feasible, but far from optimal, right? It took 5% of the battery capacity to actually just warm up that small cup of water. And as such, I don't think this is really viable if you're looking to van light this and boondock for days on end um, away from shore power and needing to warm things up with a microwave. A microwave is just, just a pretty beefy appliance in terms of power requirements. Um, that being said, I'm actually in the process of trying to upgrade my battery bank to address some of these shortcomings. Um, and I hope I'll catch you at one of these future videos where we discuss that. So with that being said, I think this is a great spot to leave it. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if so, I really hope you'll also consider subscribing to the channel. Surprising if you just scroll a little ways down and click on that subscribe button. It really does help me continue to make these videos. And I hope to catch you at one of these future ones. Uh, the new videos should be coming out every Monday. So I hope we will see you in the future. So until then, I think I'll sign off. Talk to you later. Bye.